to 18. It, it's advertised throughout the city, and it's by word of mouth. Councillor Price, by speakerphone. People that are already junior members, they might bring their friends, or, or we go to the schools and get people in. It's, it's just advertising and word of mouth that brings people to the junior program. Okay, what about um, kids who can't afford it? How do you get them interested, and do you have any programs for those who can't afford it? Well, the junior membership, uh, up until last year, the junior membership to play on Wednesday night for, for the summer was only $20. So it, it was very, very cheap. But this year, we've increased that to $40 for the year. So they, they can play for, I think it's 12 weeks for $40. Some juniors uh, take the option of being a full-time member, so they can play any time other than Wednesday night. So they would be uh, subject to an $80 fee. And families who can't afford that, is there anything that you have in place? We do, for some special circumstances, we do have a reduced rate, quite a reduced rate for people that are physically challenged. So we do have a reduced rate for those people. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Council Bryce. So we'll move on to Council Murray. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, my questions were in regards to membership and peace revenues, so they're already getting answered. Thank you for that. Uh, Council Stevens. Thank you very much for attending this evening and presumably these are your friends and um, folk we've been hearing from all day. So thank you very much for your determination. <laughs> um, so what has been very helpful here is the fact that you've demonstrated how important and how lively the space is and the community is in Regina. Um, and it's interesting for me because it's quite engaged in that space. I can't think of another uh, civic center or park in which community members are actually part of the Keeping alive. But I have a what if question. I think it's kind of been alluded to in some of your remarks about the nature of the long term community here in Regina. What if it shuts down? What happens to lawn bowling in Regina and Saskatchewan? And what happens to the community groups that seem to find a home in the current space? The thing that we have to keep in mind is if it's shut down tomorrow, we've got an impact on the club. We have a couple of uh, young folks that are on the Canadian national team. They're going to Australia. Uh, if they're successful in the, from their small group, they'll be playing at the Commonwealth Games. If the club shuts down, we lose our local events. We lose our ability for some of these people that are striving for excellence to achieve that. Um, the provincial association would be impacted because we lose a significant number of members. We probably wouldn't be able to uh, keep the provincial association going. And ultimately, the impact on Bulls Canada is the loss of, of significant membership. I might add that we're on the short list for um, sports that will be added to the Olympic Games. Bulls Canada has made a submission to World Bulls. And when you look at the opportunities for some of our competitive younger bowlers, uh, this opportunity wouldn't be there. I guess my final question, we've had delegates here before, I think it was the last uh, budget deliberation. And I think this is kind of the logic that's motivating this. We don't need to be in the lawn bowling business, for lack of a better word here. What do you say to that? As a city, we shouldn't be in this spot. What's your Why would you say that? <laughs> 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 I 